All right, he's considered one of the greatest boxing promoters in the world, and he's known for his signature hairstyle as well. Yeah, you know I'm talking about Don King. He's never held back on speaking his mind either, and he isn't pulling any punches explaining how he made it to the top. Here's John Zarella. All right, make money. Let Wherever Don King shows up, a crowd gathers. Hello, Don. Hit the jackpot. Hit the jackpot. At the Hard Rock Casino near Fort Lauderdale, handshakes, pictures. At 80 years old, the most successful boxing promoter ever. Still sports his trademark hair, his red, white, and blue colors. And he's still got game. Ha <laughs> the Italian stand. He is Tony Grano. It takes a dictionary of adjectives, outrageous, bombastic, colorful, reviled, controversial, to describe how he rubs people. Like former heavyweight boxing champ Mike Tyson. He calls you a wretched, slimy, reptilian, expletive deleted. Yes. But yet you're friends. Oh, he don't mean those things. You know what I mean? He's just saying them things because he wants attention. And don't forget, he's still a little young boy from the ghetto. We spent a day with King, a typical day, he says, in the driveway of his South Florida home. Three Bentleys, three Rolls Royces. What? George Foreman gave that to my wife. I bought it for George, and he turned right around and gave it to her. No kidding. Yeah, it's a 1974 Cornish. After 50 years of marriage, King lost his wife Henrietta two years ago. On the way to the office, he's already working. A radio interview promoting an upcoming night of boxing. Uh, Joey Hernandez, we call him Twinkle Fingers. He's a Cuban-American. What drives you? Why do you keep doing it? America drives me. It's not about money. It's about opening the door for those who couldn't open a door for themselves. King's office is an entire building, including a cluttered warehouse with decades of memorabilia. Have you got a museum that you'd like to open with all the memorabilia that you've had? Or I'm not trying to kill you off. No. <laughs> You know, when he sends for me, I'll, I'll be ready. King's life has been both brutal and charmed. He talks openly of growing up in Cleveland, running an illegal gambling operation. It was illegal, you ain't supposed to bet, you just gambling and blah, blah, blah. And then when the whites took over bed with the lottery, we're going to put lamps on the road. He talks openly of the two men he killed. The first ruled justifiable homicide after a man breaks into his home. I run to my room, get, uh, get my gun, and we shoot it out in the living room. He served four years for manslaughter after beating to death a man King says owed him money. He was later pardoned. You have regrets? You suffer deep contrition for any time that you are part of, uh, you know, the doing something that would hurt. Uh, human being. Out of his prison years, King says grew his theme. Only in America could Don King happen. These days, he fashions himself an ambassador without portfolio, a freedom fighter, meeting with the troops, presidents, world leaders. It's what gives him life, for lack of a better term, is the the art of closing a deal, the art of waving the flags and being something more than just simply a boxing promoter. During a meeting with Nelson Mandela in South Africa, King wore a t-shirt with Mandela's prison number on it. That was his number. That in, was his number in prison. In prison. You know what I mean? I say, that's nothing. I got one, too. 125-734. You never you know forgot I mean? that number, did you? Never forget it. Never forget it. You don't forget prison, man. That's why you want to stay the hell away from it. Putting it in boxing terms, King's fight card is full the day we're with him. He meets with a Ukrainian boxer and his entourage. The negotiator. <laughs> Skypes with a rapper he's promoting. What's up? What's up, Khaled? Tries arranging a fight through a South Korean ambassador. Don King might never have emerged from inner city Cleveland if not for one singular event. Signing Muhammad Ali and George Foreman to a 1974 fight in Zaire. It became known as the Rumble in the Jungle. How many rounds did that go? Eight rounds. Eight rounds. Eight rounds. It, it changed the world. And King's life. He went on to promote a who's who of boxers. Larry Holmes, Roberto Duran, Evander Holofield, Mike Tyson, Felix Trinidad, and on and on. And to this day, King says he spends millions fighting lawsuits from boxers, alleging he cheated them out of fight money. Some settled out of court. He doesn't blame the fighters. So are you saying that they're suing you because... White people are putting them up to it? Absolutely. They're doing it. They put them up to do it because 
they wouldn't even know. Some of these guys wouldn't even know where to get a case from. King, pardon the pun, never pulls punches. The IRS failed to get him on income tax evasion. He says they're still after him because they can't believe he made it going straight. It's got to be illegal because a brother can't think that way. A black man can't think that way. Much of what Don King says is clearly outrageous. At the end of the day, you're left wondering how much of it he really believes and how much is simply the promoter promoting. This is Don King, the only in America man, the greatest nation in the world. John Zarella, CNN, Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> that had to be a great phone call on the other end.